In Killing Eve, there's an ambiguity. The ambiguity of not necessarily knowing everything about everyone all the time. And I think Carolyn was at her driest, most oblique, most mysterious in the first season. But in season three, you know, her son gets killed. And that was really terrible and actually very hard to play because I wasn't sure that Carolyn had any access to those emotions. Kenny's death had a profound effect on her. But the interesting thing is that I think we look at whether the death of Kenny and her drive to discover who was really behind it also allows her to explore this world that she is addicted to. What she enjoys is the sort of spycraft game that she finds herself in. She's had to sacrifice so many things for that game. Karen discovers that loss is the thing that humanizes you. And I think that's a very good thing that's happened is that her brain is not the only part of her life that matters. I would say that Sandra's Eve is a huge part of how Carolyn became Carolyn. And we've often begun the beginning of a series together and I've always found that a great relief. We often sort of meet first and that's really good. Her relationship with Eve I think is brilliant because they sort of get each other, but at the same time they don't desperately like each other. This last series, we really explore, I think, Carolyn's morality and really what her true character is and what she represents. Carolyn really plugs into some of the history of 20th century spies. The way in which Carolyn behaves actually is something to do with the Cold War, which, you know, finished in the 60s, certainly when the war came down. It's as if Carolyn has always been the same age, all through the 70s, all through the 80s, all through the 90s, and now dragged into the 21st century. So there's something unreal, almost magical about her. I think I've discovered her as we've gone along rather than knowing who she is. I mean, that's the lovely thing about these journeys, that you're just the boat on which the story sails. You know, you're not at the end point ever. She goes on living, you know, in my head. Carolyn means a lot to me because I've got to know her so well. I really like her. I'm a less organized person. I'm uh, certainly not able to see four steps ahead, but Carolyn can. So maybe that's been one of the hugest pleasures playing somebody who has all the gifts that I don't quite have. It's a slightly different music Carolyn plays, and I've really enjoyed that. Honestly, I remember a lunch with Fiona in Romania, and it was just fantastic. Fiona has become a really deep and dear friend over the season. She's an extraordinary, multifaceted, brilliant human being who is full of charm, innate talent. And to think that she may not have come into our lives if we hadn't cast her, she may not have come into my life if we hadn't cast her on Killing Eve is, you know, that's one of the major things I'm going to take away from this process was Fiona. I've been in some wonderful shows in my life, but in the end, it's only a handful that you really miss. And this is going to be one of them.